Hey folks, Jonathan here. Before I start showing you anything on the record this, this uh, video, I wanted to talk a little bit about my grinder. And the reason I'm doing this, uh, years back, I didn't have anything to cut with when it comes to cutting steel, so I always used my welder. I had bought a Lincoln 225, the old, I think they call them tombstone welders, and I've still got it, still works. Uh, but that's what I started using and I would actually turn it up high and burn through all my steel and then of course I'd take a grinder like this big one and, and grind everything and you know we're talking about half inch plate you know not a bunch of little thin stuff but I mean on my heavier stuff and you can imagine burning it with a torch or with a uh, welder how much grinding was involved in it and I'm going to give you a little tip, and the reason I'm giving this tip is, is mostly for the younger people out there. And, you know, me growing up, I, I got tips from older people all the time. You know, you always heard that, you know, you shouldn't be picking that up. You know, you'll pay for it later, and you're back, and all this stuff. And, and you know, really, we need to listen to them tips. And, you know, the older people knew what they was talking about when they said that, and I should have listened more. I listened as much as I could, but, you know, you never listen as much as you should but this is my tip or one of them that big grinder has busted my ass for years uh, you know not just that when I had one before that I think this is a Sears Craftsman I probably remember Black and Decker or something and the one before I think I had was a big Makita and uh, they're heavy you know electric bent over using one of them it'll kill your back and you know they're good strong grinders though but the only thing I found to replace it, you know, a four inch grinder or four and a half inch grinder, a small one, won't won't do what I need to do. I picked up this air grinder and I actually bought it for ten bucks at a junkyard and it was a military salvage yard, there was a bearing bad in it. Uh, brought it home, pulled the bearing out, mashed it up at a local supply shop, I think it was probably two dollars for the bearing. And that's been a couple of years back and I've used it ever since. And I will never go back to that other one. If this one breaks, I'll go buy another one like it, no matter the cost, because the savings on my body is well worth it. Uh, that big one will wear you out. And take this piece of advice, if you're doing a bunch of this, to get an air grinder, get a lightweight grinder, uh, you know, get a good air compressor. I, you know, I've got a two stage that does 175, you know, 180 PSI, so it runs it great and uh it'll take just as much off as that big one and you know you can swap it to a flapper disc or a wire brush whatever you need to do but uh but that's my advice to you to help save your back goes right along with the drill uh you know the keep yourself from getting hurt and you know as you start getting older you start feeling the, the aches and pains of stuff you've done over the years being younger and uh but that's that's a good idea to do so if you listen to all these little tips it'll help you get along quicker and you won't hurt as bad when you do get a little bit older and uh you know if, if certain things if i'd have known when i was younger I, I would probably be farther ahead in life when it comes to you know what i've gotten done fabrication wise and how i felt for sure you know when you wake up in the mornings and you're bent over and you got to lay on the floor for five minutes to get straight and you know, you know, if you're not there yet, you'll, you know, if you don't listen to some of the advice that older people give you, you'll end up there. But uh, we'll go on and get to work on the record here, but show you more. Okay, folks, we've got both of the brackets finished up and on, and uh, you can see how we've got them bolted with the short bolts like I wanted. I've got to go get some two-inch bolts. These are inch and a half. They're not quite long enough. And if you can see, I'm going to use lock nuts on them, and uh, don't have to worry about them coming off. But next, what we're going to do is build our cross member, and below this one, and it's actually going to be a piece of four-inch tubing, and I believe I'm going to notch it and overlap it inside, top and bottom, front and back, because this is about four inches wide, and uh, that way we can, you know, the more weld we get on it, and the farther we get it in this way, the stronger it's going to be. And uh, it's quarter inch wall, so it's decent tubing, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here's what we're going to use. This is a quarter inch wall, four by four. It's 
come off a conveyor at the uh, one of the sand pits. Just got a bunch of it of scrap, but I'm gonna cut a piece of it and make the cross member. Okay, folks, we've got the cross member stuck in there. It's just torch cut. I'll take it back out and do a little grinding on it and uh, clean the paint off of my pieces and then uh, we'll get it welded on there. I'll show you more. Okay, folks, we've got it welded in here. And uh, I've got to take it back out to finish the welds up under and clean it up and paint it. But uh, you can see the overhead welds. I guess I should have waited and and uh, welded that after I got it off. But, but there it is, and I think that'll hold up just fine. All right, folks, we got it finished up. Got it in there and painted. And if you noticed, I, I had some uh, some gaps in here, and I don't mind gaps when I'm welding. I'd actually rather have them. You know, you can get you can get more weld in there. You know, if you got it flush, especially if it's something you're going to grind down, uh, and then you weld it, it makes it that much worse if you're going to grind it. But you know, we're going to leave this, of course. But I don't mind the gaps in the stuff, and that's as good as we're going to go on that. And uh, I've still got to get my longer bolts in it. And I'll show you what else that we're going to do and what we're going to start on next. Okay, folks, one of the one things I was kind of worried about was drive shaft angle. And I don't know if you can see well or not, but that's not going to be a problem at all. It didn't raise it much. It's a long enough drive shaft going to the transfer case that, that didn't give any trouble. Uh, next thing we're going to do is work on the cross member to go under here. And uh, you can see the three holes hanging down there. That's the ones that where we moved it down. So we'll build a plate for each side, and then we'll debate whether we're going to put a cross member in or just connect it in there. Or I may run a piece up from there to the existing cross member, you know, straight up. So we'll get that figured out. And uh, we're going to try to use all, you know, scrap steel for that too, just like we did on the back cross member. You know, try not to buy anything if we can keep from it. And... Uh, there's no use uh, spending extra money if you don't need to. Alright, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like if you like. Till next time, bye.